objection chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. Uh, pursuant to Committee Rule 5B and House Rule 11, the chair may postpone further proceedings on any question of approving any measure or matter or adopting an amendment on which a record a vote on the yeas and nays are ordered. Uh, before we start, Mr. Cummings, I want to welcome you back, and I want to tell you uh, you were missed on a personal and a professional level, um, how wonderful the, the other members uh, were to work with uh, in your absence. Um, your your um, absence is impossible to fill, but they did their best to do so, uh, including uh, the staff. And uh, on behalf of every member on our side, we're thrilled to have you back. Gentlemen, yield for a moment. Yes, sir. I want to uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, working with me uh, during uh, almost four months of uh, what was supposed to be a three-day procedure. In other words, I was supposed to be back in three days, and I'm coming back in 103 days. Um, but uh, I am well, and I want to thank you for your courtesy. I want to thank uh, uh, you, Ms. Connolly, for all that you have done. And I want to thank the committee and the many, many members who expressed their prayers and thoughts and concerns. And uh, I am indeed grateful. I can tell you one thing, Mr. Chairman. When you stay in a hospital uh, for over 45 days, you get to see the health care system from inside out. And I will never be the same, ever. Um, and so I thank you again. I thank you for uh, constantly checking on me uh, and trying to make sure that we were working together. And, um, and congratulations, too, because I missed that. Um, you, I think you got appointed right after I went to the hospital. But thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. Connolly. I, I just want to add my words to, to yours, Mr. Chairman, in welcoming a distinguished ranking member back. Um, we missed you. And, uh, your staff did an incredible job. The committee staff on both sides did an incredible job uh, trying to fill the void a little bit um, while we waited for your healthy return. And you also have, I think, uh, the distinguished uh, accomplishment of not an unkind word was said about you for 103 days. So, I mean, congratulations for that. Uh, but uh, uh, we really missed you and we're so glad you're back. Welcome back, Elijah. Our first item for consideration is H.R. 3731, the Secret Service Recruitment and Retention Act of 2017. The clerk will designate the bill. H.R. 3731, to provide overtime pay for employees of the United States Secret Service and for other purposes. I ask unanimous consent the bill be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Without objection, so ordered. I now recognize the gentleman from the great state of Texas, Mr. Hurd, for five minutes for a statement on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's with pleasure that I get to um, talk about Mr. John Katko's bill, because for over 150 years, hardworking individuals of the U.S. Secret Service have been asked to put their lives on the line to protect key government officials, including the President, and to secure events of great national significance. They managed to do all this despite the Secret Service suffering from historic levels of attrition and challenges related to recruiting new talent. In a December 2015 bipartisan report, our committee found that the Secret Service was experiencing a staffing crisis that threatens to jeopardize its critical mission. Due to low staffing levels, Secret Service employees have been forced to work excessive amounts of overtime. No matter the number of hours worked, Secret Service agents are subject to a statutory cap on their biweekly pay. As a result, agents are not paid for overtime hours if doing so would result in compensation above the cap during any pay period. These max outs, as they're known, contribute to the agency's low morale and unsurprisingly cause the rate of attrition to spike. Congress addressed this issue in 2016 by lifting the cap for agents on protective details during the presidential campaign. Unfortunately, the Secret Service continues to struggle with hiring and retention, exposing nearly 1,300 to the risk of exceeding the cap in 2017. This legislation extends a cap waiver for Secret Service employees who work on protective missions until the end of 2018, allowing employees to receive compensation up to the basic pay currently given to members of the executive schedule level two. Every Secret Service employee who has exceeded the cap or who is at risk of doing so because of excessive overtime will receive additional compensation under this bill. However, the Secret Service cannot continue to rely on excessive overtime 
to fix its staffing problem. This bill requires the Secret Service to submit a comprehensive strategy on overhauling the hiring process and improving retention, while also providing information on total costs and disbursement of overtime paid under this bill. While the pay cap waiver is a short-term fix, Congress fully intends to focus and to continue to focus on ensuring the Secret Service implements a long-term, meaningful reform to improve hiring and retention, thereby reducing the need for overtime at the agency. All of this information will be useful as Congress works towards a long-term fix to address problems plaguing the Secret Service. I urge all of my colleagues to support this bill. And I'd like to thank the gentleman from New York, Mr. Katko, and of course my friend, the ranking member, Mr. Cummings, for proposing this piece of legislation. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from Texas yields back. Uh, before I recognize the gentleman from Maryland, you know, even while you were out recuperating and rehabbing, and I would call at the worst possible time in the middle of one of those two, uh, you made it clear that this was important to you even while you were out and you wanted it dealt with upon your return. And with that, um, so thank you for being willing to work on it even while you were recuperating. Uh, gentlemen's recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and um, I want to thank you for uh, keeping your word. Uh, you made it clear that we would have a bill to address the Secret Service pay situation when we got when uh, this uh, for the first markup, and that's exactly what's happening today. And one of the reasons why I was so concerned about it, Mr. Chairman, is having been an employer. Uh, I've seen so many situations where um, people really depend on their paycheck. I mean, a lot of times people don't realize that if, if a fir somebody doesn't get paid, that means that the babysitter can't be paid, they can't get the groceries, they can't pay the mortgage. Uh, but in this instance, and I, I want to associate myself with every syllable that Mr. Hurd just stated, uh, it goes to something even deeper than that. Uh, in the secret service and other services, imagine uh, you work you're, you're hard and you, you come home, you tell your wife, look, uh, I got to work for Thanksgiving, I got to work on Christmas, and then you say, oh, by the way, I'm not going to get paid for the over overtime. Um, that goes to morale. And I, I think it's very difficult to retain uh, any staff if you're not going to pay them. And I know that there has been a lot of controversy as to uh, what happens with regard to the many protectees uh, under our present president. But I've made it clear, I don't care who the president is, the Secret Service has to be paid. And so I'm very proud to be joining with my colleague, Representative Katko, in introducing this measure to help Secret Service agents receive the overtime pay that they earned and, in fact, they deserve. Our bill would authorize an increase in the annual salary and overtime limit up to level two of the executive schedule for the men and women of the Secret Service. This would allow them to be compensated for the considerable hours of overtime they have already worked in 2017 and will continue to work from now through 2018. Last year, this committee unanimously passed legislation that authorized overtime pay for the thousands of hours of overtime that Secret Service agents worked in 2016, in the 2016 presidential campaign year. This year, more than 1,000 Secret Service agents have already maxed out their pay limit. And we're just in September. They will not receive any additional overtime pay if Congress does not act. Recently, Secret Service Director Ailes stated that due to the President's large family and frequent travel, it has no ability to address this issue by itself. It is clear that the demands on the Secret Service will continue to be extremely high for the foreseeable future. Congress has a responsibility to provide the support to the Secret Service that is needed. Our bill would allow the men and women of the Secret Service to be paid fairly for the hours they work. It would also help the agency effectively and efficiently recruit and retain the very best of the best. Mr. Chairman, I thank you once again for your support on this bill. Uh, you have been 
I mean, just a staunch advocate. And I also thank uh, your staff and for their assistance throughout the process. I want to thank my staff for all the work that they put into this. I also thank Representative Bonnie Coleman Watson, uh, Watson Coleman and Eleanor Holmes Norton, who are uh, original co-sponsors of this bill, along with Representatives Michael McCall, Benny Thompson, John Radcliffe, Sheila Jackson Lee, and Daniel Donovan. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I have two letters of support for this bill, one from the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association and the other from the Senior Executives Association. I ask unanimous consent that they be entered into the record. Without objection, so ordered. And again, going back to what Mr. Hurd said, we've got to really, Mr. Chairman, we've got to really look at the Secret Service to make sure um, that, that, that we give them the kind of support they need, but we've got to get down to how do we retain uh, these, these uh, great men and women. And I mean, just logic just tells you if you're not going to get, get paid, you're probably going to go somewhere else. And these, these people uh, can go almost to any agency because they are held in such high esteem. And with that, I yield back.